You know, I get this question so often every single day. I haven't played the game in a long time. I'm returning to the game. I'm a beginner player. What class should I main for PvP? It is a beautiful Friday afternoon here in California, and I want to get out and enjoy the sun. So I'm going to shoot through this video rather quickly. I'm going to give you guys two DPS and one healer because that is about the ratio that you see inside of World of Warcraft, and not everyone wants to play a healer. And I have a lot of videos like that. So we're going to go through this video rather quickly, and I'll give you my reasonings behind my picks. Please take my advice when it comes to this because I am right 90% of the time, 100% of the time something like that so starting with pick number one we're going to be going with the warrior the warrior is a bread and butter staple of world of warcraft it's been around since the start of the game and it's maintained its ranking as one of the better performing dps classes in almost every expansion now god my transmog sucks now the warrior is an amazing class for starters because number one it is a melee and melee classes are the best classes you can pick when you're starting out the game because managing distance and range is a whole nother ball game that you should not have to learn when you're trying just to understand the basics of pvp this class is very fun it does a lot of damage if you're a bg hero it's great when you have a healer behind you it is involved in a lot of strong comps in the game the only thing that you have to manage as a warrior really is your overpower stacks to increase your mortal strike your rend and your deep wounds. These bleeds are the only thing that you really have to manage in order to do damage. Now, the other thing that defensively that you're gonna have to manage is your defensive stance. Please, if you're picking up this class, start the game out in the arena match out in defensive stance. Do not come out of defensive stance all the time. You're gonna be coming out of defensive stance when you're ready to deal damage, your burst. Outside of that, stay in defensive stance, don't be a freaking noob like 90% of the Warriors at this low MMR. Stay in defensive stance, keep up your hamstring, manage your bleeds, and when you're ready to pop your burst, you can come out of defensive stance, get your blade storm going, get your fury, you know, your rage cap, pop your avatar, your war breaker, your big damn, and it does a lot of damage. The one downside to the warrior is that you have no self healing if you're playing arms, which is the primary spec. If you are playing arms, like I said, stay in defensive stance and do not blow your die by the sword like it's candy. This is your only defensive next to rallying cry, which sucks booty cheeks so die by the sword is a huge defensive for you and you want to pair that with your trinket you can trink it out of a stun if you need to and press die by the sword and that should save you but really when starting out all you have to manage is staying in defensive stance saving your die by the sword until you're really in trouble or pairing it with a, a powerful offensive cd from the enemy team and then just managing your bleeds you need to keep up your bleeds. That is the only complex thing about this class. Using your overpower to get this buff, to buff your mortal strike, it's built into the tooltip. Outside of that, your deep wounds comes from mortal strike and it's rather simple. So this class is a great bread and butter class. It's strong in arena when paired up with the DK and that will lead us to our next class. And here we are with the Death Knight. This is the next class that I would recommend to a lot of beginner or returning players. Both of these classes are melee. I don't recommend range because range involves a whole nother bunch of shenanigans that you don't want to deal with when you're starting out. No matter how much you want to, get the basics first. Listen to me, please. You'll do much better on a melee and then you can transition later. The Death Knight is by far one of the most overpowered classes when it comes to 2v2s and it's fairly or very strong in 3v3s, but that means or we're referring to the Unholy spec. I don't mean Frost Death Knights, okay? Frost Death Knights blow Bukaki. The Unholy Death Knight is very strong, but you have to manage your pet, you have to manage runes, and you have to manage runic power. Outside of that, there are some little ins and outs of the classes that you won't pick up right away, but as long as you can you know, manage to deal damage for both the Warrior and the Death Knight, the most important thing that you should be worrying about when you're picking one of these classes is understanding how to deal damage. At low rating, outside of managing your defensives and your CDs, you have to know how to deal damage. If you can't deal damage, you're going nowhere. So if you can figure out how to deal damage, manage your diseases, and 
bam, those necrotic strikes. Necrotic strikes are the key here with abomination. You will climb the, the, the just, just climb. Okay, you're just going to climb and I'll give you some examples or show you the proof behind the pudding. Yeah, here is a spec representation for 2v2s above 2200. These are at this time of making this video, the top specs for 2v2s and the season just started and you can see that we have the Holy Paladin, the Resto Druid, pretty damn near even and then for the highest the highest, highest represented DPS class compared to everybody else is the Unholy Death Knight. I mean, it's not even freaking close, man. The Death Knight is miles higher than all the other specs, and it's probably one of the easier ones to play. I've been playing with some people that just have PvE gear, and they have no PvP achievements. I found this one DK, and we were pooping on people just because he had gear and he played a Death Knight. So for Arena, starting out, coming back to the game, 2v2s are where it's at. It's going to teach you a lot about just how the game feels, class abilities. You'll get a sense of the pacing of the game. And if you're picking the Death Knight and you have no achievements, you're going to find groups much easier or a healer much easier than if you played a Fire Mage. No matter how bad you want to play a Fire Mage, you're not going to deal anywhere near as much damage as a Death Knight because Fire Mage, regardless of what anyone says, oh, it's so easy to play Rogue Mage, then you do it. It's a lot more difficult to play a Mage then a death knight there's no shame in picking a class to get your your you know the, the the wheels going or the wheels turning or your you know get the juice you whatever it's a lot easier to play one of these classes and it'll help you learn the game and then you can go on to play any other spec that you would like to play once you get a feel for arena and this leads us to the final class of the video my recommended healer my favorite healer of the expansion it is the Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin, as you saw from that graph earlier, is one of the strongest healers currently in the meta. It is right underneath the Resto Druid, and it is very similar in its representation, but I've played both. I've been healing for a long time. The Holy Paladin, in my opinion, is a much simpler healer. You don't have to manage a lot of forms. It's a great beginner class. While or although you might feel like, wow, I feel like my healing does nothing, you have to manage your CDs correctly. The Mistweaver, I would say, is a much easier healer. However, it is much weaker currently than the Holy Paladin. So I want to recommend you guys something that is strong and also easy to play. I'm not recommending you something that sucks, but it's easy to play. The Holy Paladin is very powerful. And there are a lot of resources out there when it comes to guides for the Holy Paladin. I actually have a guide on my channel that will be linked below. You can go ahead and check that out. And I will be updating a new Holy Paladin guide, but the previous guide should get you going. It's pretty simple to understand. Now, when it comes to deciding on what stats or what Azerite traits or essences you should go for when picking one of these classes, you can simply go to the arena ladder. A link will be provided below. You can click on one of the top performing people for that class, go check out their armory, and you can just simply mimic what Azerite traits they're using, what essences they're using, what stats they have, or there's a nifty website that I can also provide for you that should give you some even further information. You can also head to the lootdistrict.com. I've talked about this website before. Head over to the PvP hub and they have things for talents, honor talents, Azerite traits, essences for all specs and classes. It's super easy to use. A link will be provided below. But hopefully this video was helpful for a lot of you guys out there. If you found it helpful, you can let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, you can let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. You can also catch me on my live stream to ask me all the questions you want there. The link will be provided somewhere here on the screen or in the info box below. If you're looking for your own personalized and expensive coaching when it comes to WoW PvP or Arena, the link to my Patreon page will also be on the screen and it's the most inexpensive coaching you'll find anywhere and that's a money back guarantee. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.